Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Won Jung Song from UTS, and I'm going to talk about microbial community analysis of a membrane bioreactor incorporated with biofilm carriers and activated carbon for the nitrification of the air. Yeah, so with the exponential growth of global population, the increased demand for food production resulted in a higher dependence on synthetic fertilizers. So as can be seen in this graph, since 1961, global NPK fertilizer use increased by almost sixfold by 2020. Uh, in our current linear economy, the production of synthetic fertilizers contributes um, around 2% of global energy consumption and also results in a large greenhouse gas emission and um, depletion of limited resources. In addition, the excessive nutrients discharge into water bodies poses a major global environmental challenge like eutrophication. Given this situation, our urine is like a liquid gold because it's rich in essential nutrients for plants, which are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, although urine accounts only one volume percent in the wastewater, it accounts for 80% of nitrogen and 50% of phosphorus and potassium in municipal wastewater. And as mentioned by uh, Ji Chang, uh, soil separating urine and nutrient recovery as a fertilizer can offset the 13% of global uh, fertilizer consumption. So therefore, by source separating urine and transforming urine into a fertilizer, we can close this loop to make a circular economy. Uh, in our UTS building 11, we have a switch pipes which can separate urine from waterless male urinals in every floor. And this network allows us to, um, to collect the source separated urine. However, direct use of urine as a fertilizer is uh, smelly due to the volatile ammonia and has unwanted uh, organics and micropollutants. So therefore, urine nitrification in an ultrafiltration membrane bioreactor with activated carbon can be an innovative solution to address this problem. So in the bioreactor, ammonia oxidizing bacteria converts ammonia to nitrate, and then nitrite oxidizing bacteria converts nitrite to nitrate, which lowers pH without any chemical addition. And at the same time, high organic contents can be removed and the micropollutants can be absorbed in the, on the um, activated carbon. Uh, in addition, by using ultrafiltration membrane, virus and pathogens can be rejected and finally, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium can be recovered in one final product as a liquid fertilizer, achieving a circular economy in nutrients. However, one remaining challenge can be a long hydraulic retention time, which makes the system large footprint and more energy consumption. So to overcome this challenge, we decided to add uh, biofilm carriers in the MBR, which can reduce HRT by supporting more biomass, especially slow growing uh, nitrifying bacteria. And this can potentially lead to a compact and high performance MBR system. So as my research objectives, I focused on investigating the effect of biofilm carriers and PAC incorporation on the uh, overall performance, including nitrification rate and HRT of the MBR treating source separating urine compared to the conventional MBR. Moreover, uh, to the best of our knowledge, very little attention has been given to the microbial communities in the urine MBR process so far. So I also focused on demonstrating the effects of incorporation on the microbial diversity and composition in achieving efficient MBR uh, performance treating urine. And at the same time, I explored uh, the effects of the incorporation on the abundance and distribution of key functional bacteria focusing on the uh, dominant nitrifying bacteria in both suspended and attached growth forms. Um, so this figure is showing the schematic diagram of my experimental setup of incorporated NBR. And another conventional NBR was operated in parallel for the comparison study. 
and both MDRs were fed with a uh, uh, hydrolyzed source separated urine after some proper uh, startup phase with diluted urine feeding. And both MDRs were operated by a pH based feeding mode. For the biofilm carriers, uh, round and parabolic shaped biofilm carriers were added with 5 volume per set as its shape and low depth can uh, prevent the biomass clogging and also can transfer both uh, nutrients and oxygen. For the microbial community analysis, the suspended sludge from both reactors uh, as well as attached biomass from the biofilm carriers were collected at the end of the operation while the seed sludge was sampled before the seeding into each reactor. And the samples were then sent to the UTS uh, that next generation sequencing facility for DNA extra extraction and amplicon sequencing. So as a result, this incorporated MDR showed significantly higher nitrification rate by 36% compared to the conventional MDR. And as a result of HRT, uh, as a result of this higher nitrification rate, HRT was uh, reduced by 40% from 10 days to 6 days. In addition, the removal rate of uh, total organic carbon, TOC removal, increased by 11% from 85% to 96%. And as a result of microbial analysis, this table 2 is showing the sequencing depth and observed operational taxonomic units, OTUs, along with the diversity indicator as channel index for each samples. So rarefaction curves uh, in this graph is also generated based on the observed OTUs to examine the difference in microbial richness. The diversity and richness were highest in the seed sludge and then reduced by the transition of feed water to source separated urine. And then, uh, uh, how, yeah, so, and it further decreased in the incorporated MDR. Uh, this result might be because maybe the addition of PAC and uh, biofilm carriers was able to create a selective force that enriched certain microbe uh, species, making them predominant microbes in the system. Um, so further taxonomic analysis down to phyla and genus level was conducted for more thorough and detailed information on the bacterial communities. And as a result, uh, the feed water change to source separated urine significantly shifted the dominant sequencing order from the seed sludge samples. And interestingly, PAC addition did not change the, the order of dominance among the microbial phyla and genus, but it resulted in an increase in their abundance by up to 3%. So overall, the incorporation of PAC and biofilm carriers highly enriched the proteobacteria and formicutes, which can explain the better TOC removal rate in the PAC carriers and DR. So after that, we had a closer look at the enriched nitrifying bacteria in different growing forms. So the acclimation of seed sludge with source separated urine highly enriched predominant AOB nitrosopocasiate and NOB nitrospira in the suspended sludge by up to 30-fold and uh, 20-fold respectively. Uh, the predominant AOB nitrosopocasiate showed seven-fold higher enrichment by its attached growth on the biofilm carriers rather than suspended ones. So overall, comparing the abundance of nitrifying bacteria between the two reactors, the incorporated MDR uh, significantly enriched the abundance of nitrifying bacteria compared to the conventional MDR. So as a conclusion, biofilm carrier and PAC incorporation highly improved nitrification rate and following HRT and also TOC removal 
and uh, a comprehensive analysis of a microbial dynamics in the incorporated MDR demonstrated the abundance of distrib abundance and distribution of the key functional genera, especially nitrifying bacteria. Finally, this uh, enhancement maybe suggests the feasibility of more compact and highly efficient MBR system for soil separate during nitrification for uh, the liquid, decreased fertilizer production. Yeah, so I would like to thank ARC Nice Hub for supporting my research and also I would like to thank Professor Sean and Dr. Sharap for supervision and also my during research group members. Thank you. Um, just for a couple of quick questions from Winjo. Um, any questions for Just a quick question. So you have the microbial communities on, on the carriers. Do you measure the qPCR on the like biomass remainings on the on comparing to conventional? Yeah, yeah, actually the you mean the biomass amount yeah. was yeah, yeah. two point nine uh, like around three gram per liter like uh, three gram to in total. That's the that's the, yes, that's the yes, that's the yes, right. But did you didn't measure the QP cell, it's just just the uh, biological like bacteria loadings from the from the materials. Because you have it can it can reach a specific AOB and IOBs, but then whether they have did they have the same amount of bacteria there or you are kind of lost because you basically lost a lot of other bacteria as well. Yeah, maybe QB cell could be one uh, one way to verify it. Yeah, QB maybe we miss that. Uh, maybe in the future study we will measure it again. Thank you. Did I um, see right that on the biofilm carrier there was a lot of AOB but not much NOB? Yeah. Does that um, imply any risk of of um, accumulating too much nitrite in the system if you're enriching the, the AOB but not the NOB? Actually, uh, the reason the biofilm carrier enriched uh, by AOB because previous studies uh, found that the NOB needs some pro protection of AOB layer in outside. So we, so this configuration of our biofilm carriers has a, like a shallow type of parabolic shape. That's why I think AOB, only AOB could enrich in the attached biomass. And also, we also, uh, we only put 5 gram percent of uh, biofilm carriers, and that uh, cover that an AOB, I mean, the amount of AOB in the biofilm carriers and the whole system was not that uh, much compared to the suspended sludge. That's why the nitrite accumulation didn't. Uh, much affected. I mean, so, so you're saying that the idea was that that a film of AOB would protect NOB under that film, but you didn't actually did, you didn't actually end up with NOB being under there because of the shape of the yeah, carriers. Yeah, because the biofilm um, attached on the biofilm carriers was re, uh, thin, the biofilm. But normally in the thick biofilm, the NOB should be under the uh, AOB biofilm but our configuration of biofilm carriers was this shallow type. So only the thin biofilm could uh, form in, in the, our carriers. So that's why only AOB could survive on the biofilm carriers. So it might work better with a thicker film in a different carrier? Yeah, actually my, our, our, my hypothesis was when it's the biofilm is thicker, the anoxic layer would uh, form, formed and then it will uh, affect the nitrification. So that's why I chose this type of biofilm carriers. But yeah, this uh, by microbial analysis result showed that AOB could really enrich by these carriers. Yeah, so. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, we're going to move on to our very last speaker of the session.